What's up guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. We're gonna be making shoes in Marvelous Designer today. Cause I've been making some shoes. They're really pretty easy. They look pretty cool. Um, so I'm gonna start out in Marvelous Designer and uh, Go to the library, grab an avatar, and Sansar doesn't have any shoes on, so I use Sansar. I don't know where Sansar came from, I think he shipped with Marvelous Designer. If you don't have Sansar, get yourself a foot model. Um, sounds like a pretty cool career. But then, um, grab the rectangle tool and just drag out a rectangle about that size. This will be the, the, t the tongue of the shoe and then a rectangle about that size. This will be the sole of the shoe. So drag it to where the sole of the shoe would be. And then the back of the shoe will be like that. And then you can select this and flip the normal. Right click, flip normal. And then you can go to polygon. Do, 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 do. Draw that like little clog shape and put this on the side of the shoe and then select it, right click and symmetric pattern with sewing and put it right there. And then we can start sewing this. So if we grab our segment sewing tool, we can just click on one end, click on the other end, click on one end, click on the other end and just start sewing this together. How how you would want these to be attached, per se. What the heck is going on? Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. That looks good to me. Um, and then before we start simulating this, we need to go to settings, preferences, preferences, and simulation and disable the ground collisions. And then we also want to lower the particle distance a bit and then add like 50% shrinkage. And we can simulate that and that'll look like that. And then we're gonna add some shoelace covers. Boom, 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 boom. And then we can copy and paste this pattern over here and then flip the normal on that and put it over here because we want to sew this to this right there and this one to this right there. And then we want to add a zipper, so let's move this a little better so that they're a little bit separated. And then we can see what we're doing with the zipper. So if we go to the zipper tool and we click at the top of here, and then double click on the bottom, click on the top, double click on the bottom, that'll create a quick zipper. And then we can simulate all of that. Um, that doesn't look super good because we need to adjust the particle distance and add some shrinkage. So that everything fits nice and tight. Toy. And if we're not simulating this, we should be able to drag the zipper down. Deselect everything, and oh, there it goes. Perfect. And you can re-simulate, and it'll be halfway zipped. Neato. So now let's start adding some pressure to some of these. So I'm gonna hold Alt and uh, drag this curve down and then just to give it some shape. Um, and then I'm gonna offset his internal line, add some centimeters to that and add a few more offsets. And select this layer clone over and select the over and add some pressure to it. And 
Let's see if that'll resolve itself right there. Sometimes need to help it out a little bit. There, perfect, look at it go. And then I'm gonna do the same to here. I'm gonna offset his internal line. Uh, select this and layer clone over and add some pressure. You can be more methodical with how you want your, your shoe to look, but you know, this looks good to me. Uh, and then I'm gonna do the same here. Maybe one more offset, maybe slightly, a few more offsets, I don't know. Do, do, do. Layer clone over and add some pressure. Re-simulate. And then I'm gonna add a little pocket here. We're almost done. So I'm gonna add, uh, Create a rectangle, find it in the 3D viewer. And I'm gonna place it right about there and then I can select it and then clone as internal shape and put it where I want it right about there. And then sew this to these lines to that line, and I'll show you what that looks like here. So grab, doop, ba doop. Smell what I'm stepping in, and you can just add as much fabric as you want to wherever you want. Um, and just really build these up and make weird, wonky shoes for whoever. Um, Particle distance five, and then shrinkage 50. Cool, and I might do the same here as well. Um, just the oldest trick in the book, offset is internal line. Really a one trick pony with this stuff. Um, and then layer clone over, add some pressure. And then you can also mess with the shrinkage on the over as well if you want it to be more or less puffy. So that might help if with art directing this this sort of thing. Um, I'm just modifying this so that the sole fits over the heel. And that looks good to me. And then I'm gonna do the same with the laces covers. Offset is internal line. Do, 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 do. And the same over here. Offset is internal line. And then I can select both of them at the same time. Layer clone over. And do 60. And then with this one, we'll probably need to do minus 60 on the bottom layer because the fabric isn't like contacting the skin, I guess is what I've seen in my experience. Um, if the fabric, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense, but if the fabric's just kind of hanging out, then you'll definitely need some negative pressure on the bottom layer. And I just adjusted the, uh, the shrinkage of the top to give it a little bit more puff. And I think that's really all I wanted to teach today, except for top stitching. Um, you can do top stitching with this tool over here that says top stitch. If you go to free top stitch, then you can just start selecting points of your pattern that you want top stitching on, and that will add a little bit more detail into the final render. Um, and you can see that right now we have this top stitch, we need to put it on the top one. So that top stitch selected, but if we go to the top stitch editor, then we can change the style to, click on the default top stitch, you can change the style to overlock or something and then change the offset um, to whatever you want. And that will help add a bit more detail to your lovely work of art.
cool, cool, cool. Sweet, and um, for the souls, I sometimes make my souls in Cinema 4D or ZBrush and then simulate around it or just plop it on at the end. But we can just make a quick little puffy soul here with the same offset as internal line. We might want this to be a little bigger, a little less offsets and then uh, layer clone over and add some more pressure if that makes sense. What the heck is going on? Escape. Cool. Um, add some pressure here, 60. And then I'll probably add pressure, negative pressure here. And maybe adjust the shrinkage on the over to 60%. Let's see what that looks like. Maybe even a hundred percent. Cool. Um, maybe we'll go seventy and seventy on this. Cool. That looks good to me. As long as you combine like the top stitching, the little pockets and stuff, and like a bit of pressure here and there, I'm sure you can come up with something that looks a little bit doper than this, but right now we can just file export as a lumbic. Um, save it wherever. And yeah, these are my settings. Ogawa, unweld, thin. I think they're pretty pretty default. I don't think I really did anything with them. Maybe the scale to centimeters, but yeah, there's no animation, so we don't have to deal with that. Um, and you just hit okay. And I'll see you in Cinema 4D.